So at the end of summer, the soil can often end up looking a bit knackered. And the reason for why it's knackered is that we've grown zucchini in here, pumpkins, tomatoes, gross feeders that give us a great harvest in terms of produce, but they really take the goodness out of the soil. It's also kind of lumpy and a little bit sticky. So I want to improve its consistency and I want to raise its uh, nutrient levels so that it'll be productive once again. This is blood and bone meal. It will provide plants with important nutrients for between one and four months. If you're a vegetarian, this may well not be your bag, literally. So what you would be doing is you would be using worm compost, um, household compost, horse manure, and you'd be adding it slightly more regularly rather than just one hit and one to four months, you'd be doing it probably every month or so. As far as quantity of blood and bone meal is concerned, um, I just tend to dust the soil by stride. So in here, I would probably scatter a fistful. So here's our blood and bone meal scattered over a bed that's starving hungry and needs to be given a kickstart before we plant in it again in about a month's time. If we were not using blood and bone meal and we were using compost, then we'd be spreading compost across the soil about your thumb's length deep all the way across. Now that it's all on, we're going to turn it over. So how do we find out whether or not our beds have an alkalinity or acidity issue? This is a soil testing kit. What you do is you add samples of soil from various parts of the bed into um, some water, you mix them up, and then this will tell you what the acidity or alkalinity level is of your soil. Now I know, because I did a test earlier, that this bed is around 6.0 on the um, pH scale. So that means it's just heading towards slight acidity. How I balance that acidity and get it back towards the slightly alkaline soil and return important calcium to the soil is I'm going to add some dolomite lime. A guide is that a handful weighs about 100 grams. So a square meter of this garden, if it was quite acidic, you'd be adding about five handfuls of this. It's important to know that over liming is just as bad as not having enough lime. Um, so if you're not sure, just err on the side of caution, add a little. Especially with the lime, if you put a thick layer of it and you don't turn it over and dig it in properly, it will um, do what's called cake. So it'll form a layer that kind of goes hard and any plant roots that come in contact with it will burn and the plant certainly won't like that. So just turn it over. Now when you're chucking um, things like uh, dolomite or garden lime or even blood and bone meal around your garden, you might want to wear some gloves. Um, certainly the lime can um, hurt your hands if they're delicate. I've been doing it for uh, kind of a while now, so I guess I'm a bit past caring. Now this is it's a really good autumn task. It doesn't take too long. It's not going to cost you too much. You have got alternatives though if you don't want to use some of these products, but it will reward you. It's always really important at every stage of the gardening year to realize how important it is to feed the soil in your garden. Well-fed soil grows nutrient-rich, healthy, happy plants, and those plants are more able to resist all the uh, tension of what we term pests and diseases, but really it's just other things that want to share the harvest in our gardens. Anyway, this should help plants resist some of that attention so that we get a good harvest, a good yield for our kitchen tables. There we go. Now I'm going to leave that for about four weeks and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to plant it up.